Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with ericstrains.com. Today I'm going to be showing you three beautiful pieces of O-scale rolling stock from Weaver Models. Up first we have one of the newest freight car offerings from Weaver, a B&O wagon top box car. After that we're going to be looking at a 50 foot flat car with 35 foot trailer, otherwise known as a TOFC or trailer on flat car. In this case it's a TTX flat car with a Carolina trailer. And then lastly we'll be looking at a beautiful all brass Canadian national wood caboose. So let's talk about this B&O wagon top box car. You know, when I saw these cars in the Weaver catalog, they struck me as unusual for two reasons. First of all, this is a unique offering for O-Scale, and especially three rail O-Scale. Now I'm sure there are kits out there that'll let you build a wagon top box car, but as far as mass produced, ready to run O-Scale trains go, I don't recall a major manufacturer making a wagon top box car in recent years. So that makes this a unique offering and I think it'll be popular for steam era O-Scale modelers who are looking for something different and unique for their layout. The second thing that caught my attention about these cars was the price tag. These are priced at about $70, which is about $20 or $25 more than a typical Weaver freight car. And the reason for that price increase is because these cars are way more detailed than a typical Weaver freight car. Now, I'm a big fan of Weaver freight cars. About 10% of my freight fleet is Weaver. They're nice cars that are nicely priced and nicely detailed, but they're not the most detailed freight cars you've ever seen. This car, however, is different. This is a very highly detailed O-scale model that easily rivals high-end freight offerings from Lionel, MTH, or Atlas. In fact, I would put it above MTH and Lionel and up there with Atlas. If you've watched my videos before, you know I'm a big Atlas fan. I think they have some of the most detailed O-scale models on the market. And so for me to say that this rivals Atlas is quite a compliment. This is a superbly detailed model, and Weaver has really hit a home run with it. This car is loaded with separately applied details. On both sides of the car, you've got lots of rivet details, separately applied ladders and grab irons all over the place, separately applied steps down here, and all of these separately applied grab irons and steps and ladders and so forth are made with really fine, thin brass, so they have a really nice prototypical look to them. Here's a look at the brake wheel end of the car. Lots of nice detailing here too, separately applied grab irons and ladders and so forth. Got a brake wheel and a chain and then the brake line coming down here. One of my favorite features about this car is this little air hose here. You've got one on this end of the car and one on the other end. And they're packaged separately so when you get the car out of the box, these will be in a little baggie and you attach them to the underside of the car with super glue. And I think the reason Weaver put them in there is because if you were going to run this as a two rail model, you would have the KD coupler right about here and then you'd have a really neat prototypical look with the KD coupler here and the air hose here. But I found this works for three rail too. It looks really cool. You've got the air hose here where it's supposed to be instead of like most three rail cars where the air hose is on the coupler itself. So you've still got to deal with this big three rail coupler, but at least you've got the air hose in the prototypical location. And you know, when I ran the car, I figured maybe the hose might interfere with the coupler moving around and so forth, but it didn't. I ran this car for two or three hours and I had no problem whatsoever. So that's just a really cool feature. I don't know of any other mass produced three rail O scale cars that offer the air hose in this prototypical location. Here's what the underside of the car looks like. You've got simulated wood planks, lots of separately applied details, and of course die cast metal sprung trucks. Now since this type of wagon top box car was specific to the B&O Railroad, that's the only road name that these come in, although they do come in about 10 different variations, different colors and different paint schemes and so forth. And Weaver also gives you a choice of the kind of door that comes on the car. You can get this ribbed kind, which is called a Youngstown style door, or you can get the plain flat panel door. It's up to you. If you want to see all the variations, check them out on Weaver's website. And of course, these do come in both three rail and two rail versions. Now, if you're interested in purchasing one of these, they retail for about $73 from Weaver. If you go through a Weaver deal, you could probably get that price down into the mid 60s or so. So if you want to pick one up, contact your local Weaver dealer or go directly to Weaver Models at www.weavermodels.com. Now let's take a look at this 50 foot flat car with trailer. As you can see this is a very nice car and this is more of a typical Weaver freight car. It's not quite as intricately detailed as that wagon top box car you just saw, but on the other hand they're much more affordable. These cars run for about $60, which is a very good price considering you get the car and the trailer. And most other Weaver freight cars usually run in the $45 to $55 range. So they're very affordable and you get a lot of car for your money. And on top of all that, most of Weaver's plastic bodied freight cars are made right here in the USA, which is always a good thing. These cars all feature die cast metal sprung trucks and couplers. 
Up on top, we've got simulated wood panels on the deck. We've got a little brake wheel over here, separately applied railing on both sides. On either end of the car, you've got these flaps that come down. And what these are for is if you had a whole bunch of these cars, you could fold the flaps down and connect the cars together and simulate the loading and unloading of the trailers. The trailer itself detaches from the car like this. And as you can see, this is a nice model in its own right. You've got real working wheels with rubber tires and you've even got a spare tire here in case you want to have some fun and change the tires. These are just really nice looking and even though you get one with the flat car, these are also available for separate sale from Weaver. So if you just want to have a bunch of these sitting in a parking lot on your way out, you can buy these separately from Weaver. Finally, we come to this all brass Canadian National Wood Caboose. You heard correctly, this thing is made entirely out of brass. And let me tell you, it's a beauty. The amount of fine brass detailing on this caboose is simply amazing. You know, because it's made out of brass, it has a very sturdy feel to it. When you hold it in your hand, it has a great weight to it. And when it's rolling down the rails, it even sounds heavy. It's just a monster of a caboose. And I have no problem saying that this is probably one of the best O-scale cabooses I've ever seen. You know, if that B&O wagon top box car at the beginning of this video was a home run for Weaver, this is a grand slam. The sides of the caboose are etched to simulate the wood panels. We've got great detailing on the window trim here. Over here we've got lots of separately applied grab irons including one up here that's pretty neat. Down here we've got great detailing on the steps and then we've got these wonderful marker lights. Now when I first put the caboose on the track I thought there was a little light bulb in here because these marker lights were so very reflective but it turns out there's no light bulb inside. They just did a great job of making it reflect all the light that hits it. And these marker lights are by far my favorite details on this caboose. The ends of the caboose also have lots of great detailing, including this ladder, nice brake wheel detail, all sorts of nice piping over here, a couple of cut bar down here. Back here we've got wonderful detail on the door, and of course lots of separately applied grab irons all over the place. And I even like what they did with the three rail coupler. You know, one of the curses of doing three rail is that you've got this big, unrealistic looking coupler. But what Weaver has done on some of their brass models is tuck the three rail coupler up under the car a little bit so it doesn't stick out quite as much and therefore it looks a little more realistic, especially when you couple it up with another car. Here's a close up of the coupler and the smokestack and as you can see, they look great as well. Now let me talk about the interior of the caboose. It is illuminated and even though there's no crew figures inside, there are benches and chairs where the crew would sit. So if you wanted to, you could add some third party figures inside the caboose and it would look that much better. This caboose comes in both a two rail and three rail version, although this time I think the two rail version is sold out. Now there are two different variations of this caboose. They're both Canadian National, but one has a green leaf logo like this one, and the other one has a white leaf logo. As far as pricing goes, the retail price at Weaver is $269. Now I know that may seem sort of high at first. I know when I saw it in the catalog, I thought, $269, I don't know about that. But when I saw the caboose in person, I totally agreed with the price. It's an amazing caboose and it's well worth the money. If you're interested in getting one of these, contact your local Weaver dealer or go directly to Weaver Models at www.weavermodels.com. So that about wraps it up for this review. Again, if you're interested in purchasing any one of these wonderful O-Scale cars, contact your local Weaver Models dealer or contact Weaver Models directly at www.weavermodels.com or by phone at 570-473-9434. Anyway, I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time.